Hey there, I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things, welcome. Today, I'm going to do a little bit more work on that Coco 2 and composite board that I added to it. Composite or composite, it means the same thing, it just depends on how you want to say it. But what I'm going to do today, if you remember from the last video, I talked about that daughter board, the um, composite daughter board, how I wanted to actually mount it under the um, keyboard. So I'm going to have to desolder some wires from that and solder on some longer ones. And also you may remember there was a yellow line down the side of the screen whenever the border was white and people were saying that uh, that's probably my 555 timer is going bad. So I'm going to also try and change that. And if I have time, I'm going to take a look at one of the things I picked up at Coco Fest that I'm not going to be able to make a full video about, but I mentioned in this video. It's uh, from Retro Rewind. I picked it up at their table at Coco Fest. But before I jump into the soldering, desoldering, and all that playing around with the computers, I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. In my last video, I mentioned that if you want this composite board, all you have to do is visit PCB Way and look under the Shared Projects tab. But this is not the only project you can get. There are a number of things for various Tandy computers. Unfortunately, the only other one specifically for the color computer is this cartridge PCB. So I think that if you have a project that you have made, why not add it to the PCB Way Shared Projects page and start earning money every time someone buys your PCBs. PCB Way, where you can get your PCBs printed starting as low as $5 for 10 PCBs. Visit www.pcbway.com today. The first thing that I did was desolder the existing wires from the board. I then did the prep work of measuring how long of a wire I would need by placing the board in its approximate place, and then I added a couple of centimeters just to be sure. I cut the wires and stripped the endings. My next job was removing the old wires from the clips and soldering on the new ones. I then soldered all of the clip wires back into place on the board. The one place I couldn't completely replace the wires was the AV plugs, so instead I soldered on some extension wires and added some heat shrink so that nothing would short out by touching. I then removed the main computer from the case and desoldered the 555 chip careful to remove it without breaking it as I did not yet know if the modern 555 chips I had bought would work properly in my old Coco 2. I added a socket as this was one of the very few chips on the board not socketed. Then I plopped in the new 555 chip. With the main board back in place and the composite board clipped in and set approximately where I wanted it, I then fed the AV wires through the bottom vent and soldered them to the board. The last thing I had to do was tape the plugs to the bottom of the case in the well so they would be hidden from view. Now it was time to plug it in and try it out. And I have everything together. I have the new 555 chip in there. So let's test it out. First, I have to plug it in. Let's test it out. And it appears to be working. Ah, well that should be white, and it's yellow, so 
that is not correct. So possibly, is it the new 555 chip I put in there? Well, let's stick the old one in and see what happens. And this is it with the old 555 chip in there. Not quite as yellow, but uh, still not very white. I'm going to try hooking it up to a CRT through the um, RF can here and see what it looks like there. So I've hooked it up through the regular coax cable that uh, you originally hooked these computers up with. And as you can see, I'm getting a white screen border here. And this is actually with the original 555 chip. And here we are with the new 555 chip. So that is working fine, which means there has to be something wrong with that board that I soldered together. So I have played around with this for a while now. I've tried moving a bunch of the connections around to different points that are basically the same connection, and I just cannot get rid of the yellow. I have uh, pretty much managed to isolate it though to the green connector because when I take the green connector off I mean the picture gets really awful but it pretty much turns white but I've lost a lot of di the different colors when I do this if I tried was playing something in white and you know that picture looks absolutely like crap Looks better when it's the yellow, actually. So because it's not doing it when I'm just taking the uh, stuff straight from the can, I think that I may have damaged the board somehow when I was re-soldering it. So I guess maybe I have to start changing parts on that and uh, testing parts on that to see if I could figure out why it's doing this. All right, well, we're gonna look at one more thing today. So let's just get that all set up. And the last thing I wanna show you today is this little cartridge. This is something that I picked up at Coco Fest. You may have seen this in my video about things that I picked up from Coco Fest. What is it? Well, it's, as it says on it, the Coco Diagnostic Cartridge from Retro Rewind. So, Let's plug it into my Color Computer 3 here, just to take a look at what it does. We'll wait for the little source thing to go away, and as you can see, this is the Color Computer Diagnostic Test Program from Retro Rewind Edition 2.2. And this is an absolute must for anybody that is a collector of Cocos to uh, run a few little tests on it. As you can see at the very bottom of the screen, it is identifying that this is a 6309 Coco 3 with 512K. So you can do things like testing your basic ROM, you can uh, test your expansion ROM, your extended RAM, that's a good test. So as this one has 512K, it will go through all 512K. One of the great things about this cartridge is it will test up to, I believe eight megabytes, which is the most currently available to possibly put into a color computer three. But this will take a long time to test so, and it'll take a really long time to test a uh, um, eight megabyte one. So 
And just to show you that it does actually detect properly, you can see at the bottom of this one, it says this is a 6309 Coco 3 with 128K, which means this is the other one, my other Coco 3. And also does video tests. Not exactly the outcome I was looking for. I've pretty much ruled out that I did any damage when I changed the 555 chip since I'm getting a normal screen out of the coaxial connection. Um, it's only on that composite board, so I'm guessing it's on the composite board and it's probably connected to that green wire. So uh, my guess would be just to start changing some parts that are on that line. Um, yeah, if anybody has any suggestions out there, I would love to hear them on what they think might be the problem. But uh, that's my guess. So I guess I'm going to change a few parts in a future video. And if that doesn't work, I guess maybe I'll just have to log on to PCBWay and order a new board and see if I can get it working that way. All right. Well, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, the subscribing and the commenting below because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to check out those links in the description and I will see you next time.